Hello, my name is Mika Brueggemann, and although I'm sad we are not able to do this in person, I am very glad to be able to offer these online tutorials for you. I hope that you are all well and taking care of yourselves and your loved ones the best you can in these very strange times. A little bit about me, uh, I am a freelance musician and educator in Portland. I play in several groups, the Quadraphones, an all-female saxophone quartet with rhythm section, an Afro-Cuban band, Malau de Cuba, the Portland Jazz Composers Ensemble, of which I am also the education coordinator for the Grasshoppers Youth Composition Program, uh, and I also play in the Pitt Orchestra for Portland Center Stage and Broadway Rose Theater. Um, in addition to that, I teach private lessons, and I also help out different band programs within the local area. And so for these tutorials, um, I'm going to be giving you some saxophone tips and tricks to being able to uh, get your sound to be a bit more expressive. And uh, the very first exercise I'm going to discuss uh, is flexibility exercises, and all you will need is your mouthpiece and either a keyboard or piano for pitch reference. If you don't have a piano or keyboard handy, then there are a ton of free keyboard apps for your phone or laptop. Um, if you don't have that um, available to you, then you can certainly use these videos as a pitch reference. Um, I also have workshops, oh, workshops, worksheets that you can um, practice these, each of these exercises on your own without the video if you would like to do it that way too. The flexibility exercises are broken down into four different exercises, each one getting a little bit progressively more challenging. And the number one thing that I want to stress to all of you is that no matter what kind of music learning you're doing, your ears come first. Um, you really need to be able to listen and hear what it is that you're really trying to recreate on your instrument. Um, if you can't hear it, you're not going to be able to play it. And then the second element is to figure out what the physical connection or the mechanics are in order to be able to properly reproduce those sounds. Uh, and then once you start to get the hang of that, then it's just about being curious and exploring all the ways that you can improve and grow and create. So with that in mind, uh, and our mouthpieces in hand, um, we're going to get started. So the very first exercise is simply starting by matching a pitch. And you'll notice that on the worksheets, uh, there are different recommended pitches for each of the different saxophones. So since I'm using my alto mouthpiece, the recommended pitch is going to be A. So I'm going to play that A, let it sink in. Then the physical connection I'm going to try and make to that pitch is to sing it. Then I'm going to try and reproduce it on the mouthpiece. Okay, when you're trying this, it's going to take uh, a few attempts because it's a very strange and bizarre sound. Um, and as a reminder, make sure that your top teeth are on top of that mouthpiece. Make sure your lower lip is a cushion for the reed. You want not only the tip of the reed to vibrate, but the sides of the, vib the reed to vibrate as well. Um, when you are breathing, you want to make sure that your shoulders are down. When you inhale, your rib cage is expanding. And when you're exhaling, you're pushing from the lower curve of your belly. To really be able to get that proper air speed and support going to be able to get this reed to vibrate with just the mouthpiece. Let's try that one more time. Here's the A. Really aim for as steady of a pitch as you can. Um, once you're able to get that down pretty consistently, and I would recommend practicing this every day uh, to really help you to be able to build that consistency. Once you build that consistency, then the second exercise, 
is to try half steps. So we're going to try and get two different pitches on the mouthpiece that are a half step away, which is that Jaws interval. Singing it. It's a very small interval, which might take some practice to find exactly where that is. Um, and even if you overshoot it, that's fine. Be curious and explore how you can get that pitch to be just right. Once that starts to feel comfortable, then we st uh, keep the half step interval and we keep moving our way down. So I just played A to G sharp. Now I'm going to start on G sharp and go to G. Sing it. Ah, G, F sharp, G. F sharp, F, F sharp. You just keep working your way down. See how low you can get that pitch to go. The third exercise is um, increasing that interval. So we've been doing small intervals. Now we're going to work on increasing that interval. So we'll start again with that half step, which we're familiar with. Now we're going to do a whole step, A, G, A. F sharp A. Ah, ah. Keep almost forgetting, but I'm so glad I remember because it makes a big difference. Now we're going to do a major third, A F A. Let's do one more. A E A. Ah, I forgot to sing it. Uh, so then you just keep going down, and then eventually, hopefully, you'll be able to get a full octave. see the idea of that. So then the last one is kind of more of an advanced um, version and that involves being able to play your major scale down and play your major scale up. Now we talked about that you can, um, there are some pitches above the A note or the recommended notes that I have on your worksheet. Um, so I'm actually going to start on the B above that. And here's the major scale going down and up. challenges to this exercise is as you start to get lower and lower it's very easy for the reed to cut out um, and to sort of lose that sound in the lower register. So again if you want to just sort of explore the sensations of that the mechanics of what you need to do in order to really get that pitch to go down you can just try very slowly 
bending the sound down. And the sensation is as if I'm going So my corners are moving a lot more um, when I do it without the mouthpiece than with, but it's the, the tongue movement um, and a little bit of the throat movement that start to get more and more engaged, especially as you get lower. So here's that, what that sounds like. So you can just experiment and really try and make sure that the sound is connected the entire time and then try to get a little bit lower the next time and then a little bit lower the next time and eventually you'll be able to get all of this coordinated and really be able to get down low. Then other advanced one that you can do is just simply the arpeggio. So I'm playing B, F sharp, D sharp, B, D sharp, F sharp, B. And the last one, if you want to be really fancy, is to be able to um, play that scale in thirds. So, all the crazy sounds us saxophone players get to make. So those are four flexibility exercises, matching pitch, half steps, intervals, and the scales, uh, the advanced um, part. And make sure that you really take your time with it. Be patient, be curious, explore all these sounds. Really try to um, uh, be diligent about playing the note first, listening to it singing it, making that physical connection, and then trying to reproduce it on your instrument. So have fun with this exercise. If you have any questions, um, let me know. And we'll go wash your hands and practice. <laughs>